Hi, uh, a while back, in fact I think it was one of my first videos ever on YouTube, uh, I've made a video about uh, muzzle flashes in Jashaka. Uh, there was, while I think it was overwhelmed on the whole positively received, but that's simply probably because there was nothing else out there showing you how to do muzzle flash in Jashaka. There was, uh, there were obviously some criticisms of it, and the main criticism was there was no environmental lighting in said effect. Uh, and there was no like smokes or any smoke so and there was no blowback so in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to make blowback environmental lighting and smoke uh, this video by the way is available on YouTube so this should be a link somewhere and uh, if you it should it'll probably come up in the related videos or something or just go through my channel and you'll be able to see it I click on animation uh, so we're going to the animation layer I'm gonna clear it I've added in my raw footage, so this is my raw footage, do, 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 and I think the gunshot act comes at 402, so I'm going to click on add layer, and that'll be my muzzle flash. I'm going to scale that down, so I'll right click uh, on where it says the thing, and I'll put 0, minus 50, and same for the X scale, 0, minus 50, and that decreases the scale down, now I'm going to position it. But uh, you can just click over the r with left click over the numbers and then drag left and right to change their values and then rotate it. Same thing with the and there we go. So because obviously the flash happens only for one second, I'm going to click on plus for to add a keyframe. So on the right hand side here. Uh, da, 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 da. then I'm going to go to one frame before and down here on the transparency I'm going to decrease that to zero add keyframe so then I'm going to go to one frame after our muzzle flash and drop the transparency and add a keyframe so now we have a muzzle flash there we go so I'm going to name that flash in order to stop getting confused I'm going to add another layer and this layer will be my smoke so this is my smoke here. So the first things first, the smoke starts on frame zero, which we don't want it to happen. We want the smoke to start on where our muzzle flash starts. So the what I'll do is I'll go back to that frame for two. We need to get rid of this black part. So with the smoke layer selected, go to the media tab, click on key, and the black part's removed. Now the second thing we want to do is we want it to start here. So it's four fr four seconds into the video clip. Uh, tw this video clip is 25 frames per second long. That means 102 frames. So this, it says here in that media tab, video options, and it's got this, what I'm hovering over now, that's when it should, it, uh, we can set it to start. So if we click on 102, all of a sudden it's visible and because it will now start from frame 102. But because it obviously it starts off at static, I actually want to start this a couple of frames before, so it, it doesn't look as static. There we go. Now we need to position it. So go to controls tab. We're going to, sorry, white translate it across. Here we go. But as you can see, the smoke is visible before anything happens. So what we're going to do is go to layers, click on CPU effect, click on colorize. Now we go to the layer, the point at which our smoke is meant to be visible, and we'll add a keyframe. Then we'll go to the frame before, and we're just going to decrease the brightness completely. Click on plus, and there you go. You can't see it, and then afterwards you can see it. Now, as I don't know if you can see from the resolution, there's a lot of gunge around there and stuff. So what I want to actually do is I want to change that brightness a little bit. To if we click off the flash make it a little bit easier to watch so got click on the colorize again on under the smoke layer 
I'm going to decrease that brightness a little bit to get rid of the stuff around the sides and make it a little bit easier to see. So that there, I'm going to click add keyframe to change that because obviously we'd keyframe it beforehand. And there you go. We'll bring it down to 124 and then this following frame will increase that up. So there we go. Obviously you can play around with that with your own particular example as you want. So we've actually got a pretty good thing going on. Now we need to add our environmental effect. So the easiest way to do that is on click layer, on click. And so we've just got our background plate. Click on the right hand side here, the camera icon. And what it does is it will create a picture for us. So we go into the paint module by clear scene and bring said picture into the paint module. It's actually a very easy thing all we got to do. All we got to do is select a yellow colour in the pens and the fills. And you would literally just, as you can see, I'm doing this very rough. Do that. Do that. Do that. So we've made an outline of where we think our light will be exposed and we need environmental effects. Now, because I've changed the fill to yellow, what I'm going to do is I'm going to the fill bucket tool, change the fill bucket range a bit lower, and oh, undo that. And basically, we're just filling these in. As I said, this is a very quick demonstration. And then once we've done that, we're going to change that fill to black, increase the range of it, and then black out everything else. And then what we do is we'd export that picture. So I've actually already done that here, as you can see. So then I'll go to animation, click on add layer, and what I'm going to do is bring in this image. So I've got the layer selected, bring in the image, and we want it to be visible at 402. So I'm going to click on plus keyframe. At 401, I don't want it to be visible because we don't have a uh, any flash happen yet. So I'm going to click on change transparency to zero, click plus. And at 403, I want that transparency to be zero as well, plus. So going back to 402, we need to get rid of this black. Now, unfortunately, transparency doesn't work if you click on that media key tool. So we're actually, because it's just black and yellow, it's actually quite easy. We're just going to click on CPU effect and chroma key and it actually gets rid of everything. But you're now you're thinking it doesn't actually look that good. No, I don't mean that, don't worry. The reason it doesn't look that good is we need to do a couple of things. First thing, that transparency is way too high. So we're going to go back to the layer. And we're going to drop that transparency down to like something like seven. And we're going to make that. Next thing, it's too, as you can see, defined. So we're going to click on CPU effect Gaussian blur, and we will whack up the value on that. And as you can see, it gives you a lot softer blends into the situation. Now, you can see here it cuts off here. Uh, there is a reason for that. The reason is because when you actually do the animation image, it adds these random black bars underneath and on top. There is a way to get around that. Uh, you'd have to create a letterbox effect, which I've pre created in GIMP. So if I bring that on, it adds two black bars on the top and bottom so obviously cutting off the bottom and top and it's giving that and giving you kind of like the widescreen look so the, so far we've done it fairly uh, fairly well I think that looks pretty decent thing is we've got no blowback so we need to add in some blowback so all I did is uh, using that very same technique what I did is uh, I, I unchecked everything 
I took a picture of the point at which the gun went off, goes off. Then I, I took a picture of just before the gun goes off, so here. And then from the desktop, I clicked on said picture. So let's say it's this, for example. And I clicked on export clip, went to desktop, clicked on OK. And I did that with both pictures. I brought them into GIMP. So I've got one picture of the sh when the muzzle flash occurs and one picture beforehand. The reason is I'm gonna what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it out and I need the background. If you have a moving camera, because this is a station camera, this is fine. But because if you have a moving camera, you'll actually need to use cloning techniques, which again aren't that too complicated to use. I'm sure a simple search on YouTube will show you how to do that. But so basically, all I got to do is move this backwards and then reveal what's underneath. So all I, I'm going to select, I'm going to double click this. Sorry, uh, duplicate the layer. I'm going to click my pen tool on the left hand side. It's this a rough select control so hit control and then left click on your original to close your loop then click selection from path then click select invert layer transparency add alpha channel click delete then you're going to click select none and then we will get the move tool and we will move it up. There we go. And then what we'll do is we'll click on filters, blur, and we'll add some. It's just a small amount of Gaussian blur to the to the thing. I'd say ten. Click on OK. Now I'm going to go to zoom in a little bit. What I'm going to do is, I should have really done this before I blurred it, but what I've basically got to do is select my animation layer thing and I'm basically going to cut out where this is. So again, selection from path and then click layer, transparency, add alpha channel delete click select none uh, as you can see there's, there's a little bit of edging around here so what I'm going to just get the eraser bang, bang, bang. so now if we zoom back out it looks like we've got a bit of a blowback on our gun so we'll just go and click file save as and then we'd save that as our image that we needed uh, da -da 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 -da. I'm not going to save it because I've actually already got it loaded up into Sharka so I've got my blowback there and what I'm going to do is I go to animation layer click on add a new layer so as you can see this is why I like naming my layers uh, that'd be my smoke layer so that's my uh, environment layer There. This is my uh, letterbox layer. I will name this uh, blowback layer. The letterbox layer needs to be on top of everything. Uh, the blowback layer, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go find my image and bring it on top then uh, da, 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 we need to bring the blowback layer down to underneath everything else but on top of our raw footage there we go so as you can see that's our layer so what we want to do is only to be transparent during our muzzle flare so it's on our muzzle flare frame now so I'm going to click on plus then just like with the others go to frame before drop the transparency go to frame after Drop the transparency, and hey ho! Oh no, I've just done that with the wrong thing. Oh, 
with the wrong layer I need to use it with my blowback layer so I'll go to Ooh, if you notice there's a slight change in the actual oh it's because I took it from one of the earlier videos oh, easily sorted should be easily sorted anyway uh, da -da -da -da. That's because I've, 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 this isn't the first time I've done this, so... As you can see, we have our shot, so... Muzzle flare happens, we've got our environmental, we've got our blowback. And we've got our smoke. And that is basically how you'd create a muzzle flare inside of Jashaka. And then you'd go into the editing module and add in your sound. I've got a video on adding in sound in Jashaka, so if you just refer to that, and that'll show you how to do that. Thank you. If you have any questions, let me know, and I'll be willing to try and do whatever I can to help. Uh, just as a side note, pretty much all these steps would need to be done in something like After Effects anyway, so apart from maybe the letterboxing and the blowback if you've got a blowback gun every other step would you need to add in to the shark pretty much you need a smoke layer you need an environmental effects layer you need a flash layer and obviously you need your raw the difference is in after effects you'll probably be able to do everything inside of after effects you wouldn't need to go out to gimp or anything but yeah that was how you do it okay uh, thank you for watching if you have any questions as i said uh, let me know and i'll see what i can do to help thank you bye